Yo, 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 yo. What's going on, world? What's popping? What's popping? What's popping? I hope everything is all good. Hope everything is all well. You know what I'm saying? Super swell, whatever you want to call it. However, however way you go about your introductions. <laughs> however way you go about your introductions. You know what I'm saying? Just um, whatever you say, just make sure it's positive. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to say nothing different. You don't want to say nothing strange for a little piece of change. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But yeah, how's everybody doing today, man? I hope everything's going good. Hopefully your weekend was awesome. Um, you know, I know I had a blast this weekend. So, you know, it's a lot of stuff that I wish that I could do and do better. But, you know, we ain't about that life. You know what I'm saying? We actually here to um, strive for better, strive for perfection and whatever we're doing. Uh, and the more that we strive for perfection, of course, then uh, we can teach others, you know, how to be perfect in some way or another. And you wouldn't really have to get so bent out of shape because everybody's learning and everybody's getting better and everybody is doing what they want to do and need to do in life because that's all we are here to do. We are here for a purpose. We're here to do something um, great for someone. And, and you know, it could be for millions of people or it could just be for 10 people. You know, as long as you're impacting someone, um, somehow, some way, you're doing something good. And, you know, for that, I applaud you, you know what I'm saying? Because once then, you know, you got people who uh, understand their purpose and the way they live and, and what's the meaning of life, then that's when everybody learn and we all can break bread, you know? <laughs> um, you know, right now I'm actually trying to get this Facebook Live thing to work. I'm actually trying to um, to podcast this thing. And, you know, for some reason, I'm not really sure why it ain't working like that, you know, but Hopefully, I can get it to work in a little bit so that you guys can actually see my face while I'm doing this. Um, but, you know, anyway, since I got y'all attention, <laughs> um, one of the things I want to talk about today is actually uh, about hum day. You know what I'm saying? One of the things I want to talk about today is hum day. Like, what is hum day? You know, like, how did that even how did that even start? You know what I'm saying? And I think that if we look at the meaning of hum day, we can look at why things are the way they are when we, as we progress towards hum day. You know what I'm saying? Did that make sense? Like, why are things the way they are? (laughs) You know, why is it that for some reason, um, hum day is, is one of the greatest days during the week? You know, it's Wednesday, it's the middle day of the week, and it's almost like we're just looking forward just to, just to getting there, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, I think that we are very, very, I don't know what to say. Like we, we, we want to strive to have better weeks, but it's almost like our week doesn't get better until Wednesday, you know, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, you know, sucks for some reason, you know what I'm saying? Nobody really wants to, to, I guess, admit that when you make it to those days, you know what I'm saying, to Monday, to Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, that it could be a little rough. You know what I'm saying? You got to deal with the same people at your job. You got to deal with people that you don't like, people who you don't really want to work with. You know what I'm saying? And it just makes it a hassle for you to think positively about the whole entire week, you know, but because we got something to look forward to once they hit Wednesday, which is the weekend, you know, it gives, I guess, that extra push, that extra motivation, that that extra recharge to just continue to keep doing whatever you doing during the week so that you'll be able to sustain and to enjoy supposedly the fruits of your labor on the weekend. You know what I'm saying? And Even with that, you got to be careful because a lot of people live only for the weekends. You know what I'm saying? When you live only for the weekends, you know, it it can, it almost means that like your purpose is only for the weekends. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Like your purpose is only for the weekends. Your purpose isn't not only for the weekend. 
You do not have to live only for the weekend. And I'm going to keep on saying that throughout this uh, this podcast, is that you do not have to live only for the weekend. You actually can, can live for something greater than the weekend. And when you live for something greater than the weekend, that means that you got a vision, you got a plan, and you got a purpose. You know what I'm saying? When you have a vision, a plan, and a purpose for your life, then that's when things actually start to get better for you. You don't have to look forward to hump day. You know what I'm saying? A hump day is just a day. Hump Wednesday is just as much as Tuesday. Tuesday is just as much as Wednesday. You know what I'm saying? And like for some reason, people don't understand that. People don't want to understand that. And it just gets it gets hectic, you know, when you start to feel like um that your days are only for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. When your day, when you feel like your days is only for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, then I really don't know, don't know what to tell you. I feel like you could do much more in your life during the week instead of just on the weekend. You know, some people look at the weekend as just a weekend to unwind, you know, to um, re reconnect with friends because during the week you guys may don't talk like that, or you know, during the weekend you you feel like this is a perfect time to maybe spend time with your kids to spend time with your family, you know, stuff like that, Um, which I understand and I get, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like that too. Like when, when I'm working during the week, cause I work at the boys and girls club. So I deal with kids Monday through Friday. So of course I want to be away from them kids. No doubt about it. I want to be away from them kids. Like those kids, boy, like they can wear you out. Like, what I mean to tell you, these kids can wear you out. Like, I deal with second graders. Most, sometimes I deal with the whole program. So that's K4 through eighth grade. But what keeps me energized and what keeps me going is the fact that it's my passion. You know what I'm saying? It's my passion to work with those kids. I like what I do. I like the fact that I can joke around with them and play with them and the kids look up to me. I like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm pleased by that. That's something that brings joy to my soul. It brings joy to my heart. And one of the things that I don't understand is how people get mad at people who actually does what it is they set their heart out to do and that they're passionate about. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's bigger than just trying to make a dollar. You know, it's bigger than um, being, living paycheck to paycheck. It's bigger than that. You know, it's bigger than what what we try to make this life out to be because we're wrong most of the time. Let's be honest. Think about all the things you've been wrong about in your life. You know what I'm saying? Think about that. Think about all the things you've been wrong about in your life. And think about all the things that you regret in your life or that you wish you could change. You know what I'm saying? Like so many people wish they can change things in their life. That is pathetic. There's so many things I wish I could change. Or if I can go back and change it, I would. But I also understand the verse in Romans 8.28 that all things work together for our good. And if I can stay with that focus and that mentality that that nothing is God or everything in life is either God ordained or God allowed, then that means it's for a reason. God allows things to happen in our lives for a reason. You are where you are today for a reason. And God is not the type to let us fall too far from the tree. (laughs) But he will allow us to fall if we're being stubborn, if we're being um, objective and subjective, you know, whatever active, (laughs) you know, that 
that God is like, all right, well, if that's what you want to do, that's what you want to do. It may not be what I have planned for you, but because I love you, I'm going to let you go for it. And then later on, you're going to come back to me and you're going to you're going to find out why I didn't want that for you in the first place. You know, that's just how God is. God is a gentleman and God is not going to let you um, or God is not going to allow himself to infringe on your rights to free will. Which is the scary part, because that means we are in control of our destiny. God's not. God's not in control of our destiny. We, as individuals, are in control of our destiny. Now, there's people that God pre-planned and pre-chooses to um, function in this world as leaders to help lead other people to want to get to know God. But for the most part, every single individual in, on this planet has to choose what they want and do out of life. And it gets deeper and deeper the further you go into that because so many people don't understand how much God loves them and how much God wants them to succeed in life. You don't have to wait till heaven in order to experience the life of freedom and joy and happiness. You can have all that stuff now. That same joy, happiness, freedom that you feel like you get on the weekends God wants you to experience that same joy, that peace, that that um, releasing of stress feeling every single day of your life. You ain't got to wait till a hum day and the weekend. You ain't got to wait till those days. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's dumb for people to really sit here and think that God only wants them to enjoy life on the weekend. That is not the case at all. You know, I had a real good time over the weekend. You know, I went to the beach, hung out there, saw some, saw a whole lot of people that I knew, shook hands, broke bread, went out, ate, you know, dip, dipped in, dipped into the water a little bit. <laughs> you know, really, really, you know, went, really had a good time. Went out to these festivals, you know, did some, did some walking around on the east side. Um, and just really had a really good time. Took some pictures, hung out. You know, like stuff like that is good. It's 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 what we look forward to during the, during the week. We look forward to those moments where we can kick it and hang out, enjoy the sun and tan, and you know, go on trips and travel. But some of us, you know, because we're so depressed and so hung up on making a dollar. That we don't even understand life as a whole, except for on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Or in that case, to go even further, just on Friday, Saturday. Some of us work jobs that we just hate and we do not want to show up at. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's real, y'all. It is so real. It is so real. And I just wish that people understood how much God loved them and that how much people can actually um, enjoy just the fruits of their labor, not only just during the week, but also on the weekend. And I want people to know that when you find your passion, you find your purpose. And you guys have heard me say that so many times. I know it's been a while since I did a podcast. I've been busy. And honestly, too, I ran out of different things to talk about. So I just been laying low until I get the green light to be able to hop back on doing these uh, broadcasts and these podcasts because I feel like I got something to give to the people. See, this is one of my passions, which is motivation, inspiration and empowerment. I love doing this stuff. I love encouraging people. I love helping people to find their purpose and their vision. These are things that God has invested in me to want to invest in you guys, the ones that's listening. So many people is walking around this earth aimlessly without nothing for themselves. Like there's there's no real desire to want to live for something greater than themselves because they have not experienced the one 
that is greater than themselves. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> I might have to write that down. And it gets it gets even more depressing when you start to look in some of these neighborhoods and um and really start to see the disparity. You know, you really you really start to see the disparity that's going on in people's lives. You know what I'm saying? It just gets realer and it gets realer. Um so for for those of you guys that's just now joining this uh broadcast i'm just i'm just doing um a little inspirational talking right now you know i want people to to really catch on to what i'm doing right now which is um encouraging people to not be so caught up with life as it is right now you know the way life is right now does not have to be that way don't confess okay do not confess what you already know Confess what God has already done in your life. Confess those things. You know, when you confess those things, when you allow um, the things of this world, all the hurt, pain, depression, anxiety, worries, those things that you deal with on a day-to-day basis that us as human beings deal with constantly, once when you learn that all those things are only happening and is done only for a season, and that it's not going to be a forever thing, then you will learn to not trip over stuff like, um, I don't know when I'm going to pay my bill. If you know that God is for you, you think God is just going to leave you hanging and let you not make good on your rent? Or, you know what I'm saying? You think you think God is going to just let you just fall off the map like that? No. Nah. You know, the way God got things set up, the way he the way he work out his plans in your life is through faith. You know what I'm saying? If you got if you got faith in God to know that you ain't got to make it till hump day to have fun and to enjoy life, then you know you in a real good place. If Wednesday is one of the top best days for you in your week, then your whole life ain't ain't set up right. I'm going to say that again. If you got to wait till Wednesday to experience new life during the week, then your life ain't set up right. You ain't you're not doing what you know you need to be doing. You know what I'm saying? You're not doing what you know you need to be doing only because passion makes perfect. Passion makes perfect. We always hear the coin phrase, the coin phrase. You know, what they say, practice make perfect, right? Practice make perfect, which I would say is 90% true. You know what I'm saying? Because as much as Steph Curry practiced his threes, he ain't always perfect from three. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? You know, practice, practice makes you more consistent. That's what practice do. You know what I'm saying? Practice make you more consistent at, doing the best you can. If you ain't practicing every day on what it is that you know you need to be good at, you're not going to be good at it. Let's just keep it real. You're just not going to be good at it. You know what I'm saying? I remember back in the day when I was a young cat, you know, when I was a young cat, (laughs) you know, I used to try to make it a practice. You know, I used to try to make it a practice to try to talk to girls. I mean, I tried to talk to every single girl. Like, when I mean to tell you I used to be at these girls, like, I'm like, man, I have so many numbers. Once when I got good at it. But before I got good at it, I used to be a pure lame. You know what I'm saying? Like, I used to could never talk to a girl. I used to be so scared. Like, I was one of those people, you know, that, that, you, that you will find or what they call a wallflower. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like at all the at all the little events in high school, the dance events and stuff, I used to just be posted thinking I'm cool. But really in reality, like I wanted to talk to some females, but really I was just 
I couldn't I couldn't put myself up to do it. You know what I'm saying? Like people need liquid courage sometimes to talk to a girl. But me, I just needed courage, period. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And like when you practice like I was doing, talking to a lot of the women that I was talking to, you know what I'm saying? Some of them, some of them bad, some of them wasn't. You know, I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna sit here and say that I just was just talking to every single bad girl that was out there. But I do know that a lot of those situations, like the rejections and the and the um the disses and the times that I've been stood up in my life, like it literally helped me to just understand how to deal with people and especially how to deal with women. You know, and it taught me that I can't just be coming up to girls any kind of way. It taught me how to teach women, talk to women with respect. You know what I'm saying? Because the women that I was attracted to were women who were highly respectable women. You know what I'm saying? Like all the girls that the dudes talked to, I wouldn't even, to be honest, I wouldn't even really feel in that. You know what I'm saying? I really wasn't. It's just that once when you get to a place in your life where you just know, where you just know your worth and you know what you want, then you're going to go for those things naturally. But if you don't know what you want, and if you don't really understand the value in life, period, then you're always going to settle. You know, you're always going to go for things that don't really equate to your own self-worth and your own value. You know, if that makes sense. Um, And I just wish for people to catch on to the ideology, you know, the ideology, <laughs> you know, of, of the idea that once when you understand that God has set a whole foundation, a whole plan out for your life, everything is just going to work itself out. Things start to be a little bit more easier to deal with. And the easier things become, the less stress it is on your life. And on your show. Um, You know, Jesus said, come unto me, all who are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. So. The rest that you're not experiencing in your life is because you are overburdened. You're overburdened. Admit it. You're overburdened. You know. When you get the hump days, because you're starting to realize that, yes, I can soon get this burden up off me. I can soon, you know, get this stress and this anguish of dealing with my job and dealing with these kids. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you can, you can allow your life, dude, you and not do, but you can allow your life, people. <laughs> To be a little bit less stressed out as soon as you give God what you need to give him, which is all the things that is making you heavy laden. I'm going to repeat that again, which is all the things that are making you heavy laden. He said, come unto me, all who are heavy laden. I haven't met not one person in this world who ain't heavy laden. Do you? Do you know somebody who ain't got no burden in their life? Yes, and I went, I went there. Ain't got no. <laughs> Do you know anybody who ain't got no burdens in their life? Everybody got some burden. Everybody do. And can't nobody tell me nothing because I got some burdens right now that I already gave to the Lord. And I feel so much peace because of it. You know, like there's there's relationship factors, <laughs> for example. You know, as a single man, I deal with the burden of marriage. I want to be married one day. You know what I'm saying? I'm like asking God when. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it's like, Lord. Oh. But I also understand that that, that God puts me in in this bubble of singleness, you know what I'm saying? Because he wants me to, to focus on whatever it is that he's giving me to focus on. And when you got things that, like relationships, that takes precedence 
in your mind and in your heart, it, it'd be hard to, to, to divvy out that time between you and God and you and your spouse. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, okay, God, I see what you're doing. You know, like I, I'm not a ladies man, but I am a man with the ladies. Though. <laughs> but my goal is to inspire women to want to at least wait, inspire men to at least wait until they know what they want out of a woman or out of a man. You see what I'm saying? Like I want to be that example. Like, it's a lot of things and it's a lot of people that are losing out on life because they don't have examples. You know, they don't have mentors or they don't have leaders that can show them the way. You know, like the way Jesus, you know, showed the way, the truth, and the life. So I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to preach to y'all. I hope that y'all get that. I'm not trying to preach to y'all. But what I am trying to do and what I will consistently do is lead by example the best way I can. You know, what you choose to do during your week, every every single day of your life, that's your choice. I ain't got nothing to do with that. Okay? Now, if I notice something that may be of a hindrance to you, oh yeah, I'm gonna say something. I'm gonna tell you. I'm be like, hey bro, don't do that. You know what I'm saying? But I want you to do the same for me as well. Cause if you look at it, you know, if you kind of, you know, consider life and look at it black and white, you know. We are a little bit of our brother's keeper. You know what I'm saying? We are a little bit of our brother's keeper. You know what I'm saying? Think about it. If you see a person about to walk across the street during traffic, you may not know that person from Adam and Eve. (laughs) But what you gonna do? Hey, watch out. Don't go. Wait. And you're going to most likely try, if you can, without getting hurt, run and grab that person back. Then you're going to yell at him, be like, hey, bro, what are you doing? You may not know that person. You know what I'm saying? So it's like we are, in a sense, our brother's keeper. You know, we're socially, we're socially hardwired. We're socially hardwired to care and to love people. Like socially hardwired. No ifs, ands, buts about it. There's not one person in this world who don't desire love. Because the Bible says we love because who? God first loved us. We were created out of love. You see what I'm saying? Like when God formed you in your mother's womb, Shift you, made you, made your nose the way it was, made your eyes the way it was, you know what I'm saying? Like, made your, made your beard grow the way it's going to grow if you me, Simeon, you know? <laughs> it goes to show you that you were made perfect. You know, you were made perfect. I'm going to say that again. You were made perfect. So that same perfectness that God created you with, if you give God your plans during the week and you allow him to lead your days, your week is going to start to seem perfect as well. Like, perfect. You're going to be like, man, this day was a full day. You know, like, I'm not I'm not stressed out about work no more. I realize that my boss is just as human as I am. And maybe God got me working here because maybe one day he may want me to be the manager. He may want me to be the supervisor. But once again, if you keep on looking at your job situation, the way you be looking at it. uh, 
to complain means to remain. So the more you complain about your emotional state at that job, the more that you remain in your emotional state at that job or wherever you be at. And that's not a place you want to be. You want to be at a place where when you go to work, you geeked. You geeked about going to work. No matter how hard the job is, no matter how stressful the job is, just be happy that you got a job. Just be happy that you actually can pay your bills, provide for your kids. And look at your job as just a place that you're there for for a season. You know, like a lot of us equate our dreams to our income. You can't do that. You are, you're already killing yourself just by doing that. You know, never equate your dreams to the level of your income. The Wisconsin Dells is not a dream vacation. I'm telling you that. I'm telling y'all that up front. The Wisconsin Dells is not a dream vacation. It's just not. Now, I understand going to the Wisconsin Dells is cool. You know what I'm saying? If that's what your money can afford at this time and you and you looking to get out the house and want to do something, hey, do it. If I was you, I'll do it. But in the back of my mind, I already be plan, planning like nine months or 10 months from now, I'm going to save up this amount of money every single check. So I can take me and my family or just me by myself and I'm going to go to Orlando, Florida. Or I'm going to go to Europe or or I'm going to go to uh whatever place y'all like to go. You know what I'm saying? You can comment that you can comment um if you if you're broad, if you're looking at this live on Facebook, you can comment what's your dream place that you want to go? What's the place that you if you if you had if you had all the money if you had all the money in the world and if money was not going to be a hindrance towards you, where would you go? You know what I'm saying? Where would you go? Like so this whole week, we have an option to either love what God has given us. Or despise what God has given. I'm going to let y'all think about that. I'm going to let y'all think about that. You have a choice. This whole week, Monday through whenever your off day is. You have a choice all week. To either love what God has given you or despise what God has given you. It's that cut and dry. Ain't no in between. Because the opposite of love is hate. And the opposite of hate is love. So, you choose, brothers and sisters. (laughs) You choose. The outcome of your situations. And once when you choose, you have to live with it. You have to live with it. And when you live with it, deal with it. But I'm here to tell you right now that no matter how hard life gets and how trying life can get, God has already made a way of escape for you. God has already showed you what's next, whether you know it or not. 
Like, you were created for a purpose. You were created to do great things. Five years ago, you made a decision to be where you are today. And if you don't like where you are today, make a decision now that would affect the next five years of your life. You know, that's how I look at life. You know, I look at life, I break it down in five-year increments. In five-year increments. I graduate college next May. I hope to move to New York. My dream is to be on Good Morning America. Hence, send me on TV. I got big goals, big plans. You know, I got it written on my wall right here. Everything that I want to do within the next five years is right there. And it's up to God if we want to add more to it. But that's just a breakdown, a gist, so to speak, of everything that I want to do. So whenever I start to get down or whenever I start to look at my life and my current situations and how it is or whatever, I just look at that vision board, that that vision piece on my wall, my plan. Because God has called me to be a voice to the voiceless. That is my role in this world, is to be a voice to the voiceless. That's my role in this world. And every single day I wake up and I look at that and I remind myself that I'm a voice to the voiceless. The king of the airwaves. The king of media. I already know what God has showed me and this is what keeps me going. The devil tried to have me drop out of college many times, but I'm still here. All those years of just anguish and pain and frustration and irritation. And God has carried me through the whole entire time. So if you look at your life right now, look at all the things that you've gone through. All the places of you, all the places that you've gone, everything that you've ever done leading up to This day that you're watching this and listening to this right now. Like. All you can say is, but God. But God helped you get through this. And the Bible says faithful is he that called you. And will do it. God is faithful, but God needs you to be faithful. And the more that you're faithful, the more that you trust God with everything in your life, the more that you allow him to show you his plans for your life, I guarantee you, like, your life will start to make much more sense. You don't have to live life confused. That's your choice. That's a choice. If you're confused about your life, if you're confused about your sexual orientation, if you're confused about your identity as a person, that's a a choice. You chose to be confused. God has already made it plain and simple. He already showed. He already laid the path of life out for you. But because you don't want to do it or follow it, you're left to your own choices. And me, I don't trust myself worth nothing. (laughs) I trust God and him alone. So look at how your week is going this week. What is your plans for this week? What do you hope to accomplish this week? What do you desire to do out of this life? You know, make a goal, set some goals this week. You know, 
allow God to work his plan within your plan. A lot of it starts out mostly with trusting Jesus as your personal savior. You know, when you trust Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you know, that's when things start to get real for you. But I also understand why you wouldn't want to. Because the Bible says, how can darkness fellowship with light? So think about that today. Think about Think about when you're thinking about hump day. (laughs) Think about why can't I experience that same joy and feeling on Monday? I need you guys to think about that. And trust me, God has already paved the way for you. Everything you want out of this life can be accomplished. If you have the right amount of faith, you can do it. If you have the right amount of faith, you can do it. Okay? I think that's it. Um, Follow me on Snapchat at Simeon TV. Follow me on Twitter at Simeon TV. Um, And spread the message. If you follow me on Facebook, definitely this podcast will be linked up on my timeline. So share it. Give it to somebody who you know is struggling, who you know may need a little inspiration, empowerment. You know, share it. Share if you care. And never be ashamed of where you are in life. You are where you are for a reason. Love it. Enjoy the process. Keep moving on. Trust God because I I guarantee you that there's a whole new season awaiting you right now. But it's because of your words. It's your words that's going to keep you from seeing the promises of God. Only speak life over yourself. Who? This is Simeon TV. I love y'all.